you got to be careful about that. And, um, you know, now, like I started, um, you know, one thing that really inspired me was uh, watching some, some more recent uh, interviews that you did. And there was one you, you, you did with, I forgot his name. It's, I think his name is Drew, Drew, Drew Bay. Drew Beck. Yeah, Drew Beck. He's a uh, strength training specialist. Mm -hmm. Very, very intelligent guy. Yeah, and you guys were talking about uh, super slow. And then yeah. were talking about uh, isometrics. Yeah. And I was listening to that. And then I listened to the whole thing. I think I must have listened to uh, between 15 and 20 hours of, oh. of, uh, of your videos on YouTube uh. before, you know, before we got on this call here, before we, we, we did this podcast. So I have a lot of information right now rolling in my head. And then what I come to realize is that, wait a second, super slow and isometric. If that's all I need to um, get really strong for my sport and save my joints, that's what I'm going to do. And I did a workout like just before uh, we, we hopped on. Damn, that was hard. That was, that was so hard. That was so hard. Unbelievable. The, um, I've changed my views a little bit in the past few years, you know, like, um, let me start by saying that almost any system that's progressive and hard will give you results. You know, powerlifting works, Olympic lifting works, kettlebells work, you know, CrossFit works, uh, you know, bodybuilding works, gymnastics training type works, you know. You'll see people getting big, strong, muscular on almost anything, body weight only, you know, mm -hmm. isometric. But if, to, if you were to do any number of programs and really train hard and progressively over a number of years, you would reach a certain point genetically, right? You would meet your genetic potential. And how long that takes is it's somewhat individual, but most people can reach their genetic potential between three to five years. You know, but you, you, you mean in terms, of, in terms of strength or in terms of muscle? Yeah, muscle uh, okay. all of it. Or hypertrophy, strength, you know, mm -hmm. you, you reach it three to five years. Some people faster, some people a little longer, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends if you're doing other strenuous activities, which would hold you down. Obviously, if you're a marathon runner or, you know, you're riding uh, Tour de France type bike races, it's going to take you a lot longer to put on muscle than, let's say, a guy that does nothing but strength running. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in our game, you know, with uh, grappling, it is a form of resistance training. We're always resisting our muscles against someone else. So it's very easy to get overtrained if you're adding too much volume and multiple sets. And, you know, some guys try to train like bodybuilder while doing judo. And it, it's very hard. It's very easy to get overtrained. But the point I'm trying to make is that any number, any number of systems will bring you to the same point. So if that's true, why not pick the, the system that takes the least amount of time? Why not pick the system that is safer, that is proven safety record? And why not pick the system that um, is a lot less stressful on your joints? That's my point. You're gonna get, you're gonna get good results on any number of programs. But for me, I want the least amount of time I want the one that's safest and most sustainable. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'm going to pick it back over something else. So I'm not saying this doesn't work and that doesn't work, but you know, we only have so much time in the day. And in a sport like grappling or jujitsu or judo or whatever, uh, the, the majority of your time and energy needs to be in the map. You need to perfect your skills and you need to do it a lot. So you can't afford to do these big marathon strength training sessions or train like an Olympic weightlifter or whatever, you know? The other point I want to make, there's this myth out there that training fast and explosive will make you fast and explosive on the mat. It's not true. The way you get fast and explosive on the mat is by doing your techniques fast and explosive, you know? You, you do your fit-in throws, you do actual throws, you know? Mm -hmm. And you can save your partner a lot of wear and tear by just throwing them on a crash pad, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Try, you know, you, you know, um, 
we used to do like a hundred throw workouts. You just pick your primary throw and do a uh, 50 of those. And then your secondary throw and do 50 of those. That's a hell of a workout, man. Really tiring. And maybe you alternate with your partner, like every five to 10 throws, you know, I'll do mm-hmm. five, you do five. I do five, you do five. Then we sh- switch the throw. Man, by the time you're done with that, you get a tremendous amount of practice and, and, and you know, you, you really fine tune it. At the same time, you know, your cardiorespiratory system and, and your muscles do get a bit of a work, even though it's technique based. That's the way you get good at your sport, not doing power cleans or kettlebell snatches or box jumps or all that stuff. Do those things work? Yeah, more or less, but with a lot of wear and tear on your joints. We really tear you down over time. That's what I found. You know, the kettlebells in particular, uh, the, the high repetition type cleans and swings and snatches really wreck your elbows and your shoulders. And, you know, there's a lot of shearing force in your spine. That's why I switched over to isometrics and uh, slow, high tension body weight training. Yeah, yeah. And part, and part of that was convenience too, because I didn't have a lot of equipment. And I, I don't like to be equipment dependent. I like stuff I can do right on the side of the mat after training, you know? Mm-hmm. All you need is a pull-up bar or a good rope to climb or something, you know? You don't need a lot of equipment. If, if, if you were to like, uh, if you were able to go back in time, right? With what you know now, would you like completely disregard, uh, not, not completely disregard, but would you stick to isometrics and super slow and then just focus on skill? I would have. That's what you, uh, that's what you that's would what recommend started. for. Hmm? That's where I was when I first started Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, and yeah. You did that for rest. I, I started veering off. I got, you know, I, I fell for the, uh, the slick marketing and advertising of the kettlebell movement. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was very slick, you know. But I learned later on that there was a lot of half, half truths and some outright falsehoods being told, you know, by, by the marketing people behind that whole kettlebell thing. Mm-hmm. A lot of fake stuff, you know, a lot of things that were exaggerated or just pure lies, really. So it took me a while to figure it out. But also, I was starting to feel it on my own joints. And I'm thinking, wow, this doesn't feel right. 